Good afternoon viewers, my name is Tonale Mungaba and welcome to another episode of Regional Review and on today's episode we are going to be looking at what stories have been happening in the regions and we are going to be recapping it today. I'll be your host Tonale Mungaba and do, do stay tuned for what we have in store for you today. Before we get into the news of things on our, t on our calendar for today, it is World Maker Friend Day. And as we all know, friendships form part of uh, essential part of society. As sometimes when we family can no longer be relied on, we have family and friends that we can count on. And also we have friends that now have become family. So watch this video that Namibia Media Holdings has prepared for you. For our first story today, we are going all the way to Zolzanjupa region where the Deputy Chairperson of the Whole House Committee of the Fifth Children's Parliament, Honorable Rivaldo Kavanga, visited 48 Primary School in Ochivarongo to celebrate World Constitution Day together with the Ombudsman of Namibia. He taught them about the Constitution and taught them about the importance of knowing the laws of the country. The Deputy Chairperson of the Whole House Committee of the Fifth Children's Parliament, Rivaldo Kavanga, accompanied the Ombudsman to 48 Primary Secondary School in Ochivarongo. Of the delegation led by Ombudsman Advocate Jaco commemorated Constitution Day with school children. And Ka Rivaldo Kavanga was the master of ceremonies and engaged the learners of the schools in attendance on various aspects of the Constitution and, and its meaning to children and young people. In attendance was also the governor of the Osanjuba region, Honorable, Honorable James Werika, the Ombudsman Advocate Basilius, and the Deputy Mayor of Oshuarongo, Her Worship Julienda Kapungu. The learners from various schools also attended and completed a poetry competition in which three of the learners won prizes for writing outstanding pieces based on the day. For our second story, we are going all the way to the south where Monique Adam brings us uh, the Landless People's Movement where they celebrated their third birthday and their leader, Swart, uh, uh, Bernardo Swartboy, had a lecture about Namibian politics and inspired the youth or, or spoke to the youth about the importance about knowing the history of their country and about the politics and had a little lecture about the betrayal when it comes to Namibia. in this country are at the level where they were in 1984. In 1984. And then young people cannot grow up with families and stay in a form in which they can be proper, properly developed in terms of their own culture. That is why a young person can easily today be involved in smoking skunk, in engaging in the pre and post youth activity of occupied pipe smoking. Because your culture has not been developed because the economic and social space has not been developed. Your existence as a person in a particular culture has been betrayed because nobody developed it. And the question we're asking in LPM, and I hope in the youth command is, for how long will Namibians find a life around corrugated iron sheets as normal and acceptable? 
For how long? What will it take for Namibians by virtue of their own living conditions to go to elections and vote differently? Because what you see here is what is known as structural violence. And the new liberal legal setup tells us rule of law. But which law must rule over your inequality, over your injustice, over your poverty? That is why new liberal thinking around violence is that if I beat Charles, that is violence. New liberalism has told us violence is only physical. But critical theory would tell you that violence is not just physical violence. It's economic, social, and cultural impositions that result in one of the biggest violences you can find in the world. That violence is called poverty. It's structurally designed. And you know what is the biggest betrayal that is likely to enhance that structural violence? Look at how the education system has been deformed as we speak in this country. Suddenly, a child has option to stop his school at grade 11. So you have an option to remain undereducated and you must take it voluntarily. And few have options to proceed. What is happening? The poor will remain even poorer. A new generation of undereducated Namibians will emerge. For our last story of today, we are also going to be in the southern part of the country where Monique Adam brings us the newly sworn in mayor of Kirtmanshorp, McDonald's William Hunter from the Landless People's Movement, and he was sworn in uh, last week. Um, Monique Adam speaks about how he swears to protect uh, the town and to help in terms of development and helping the town to further develop. and friends, I would like to thank the Heavenly Father for this humble but noble responsibility. It is truly an honor and a privilege to be chosen as mayor of this dynamic town, Kirtmansur. Starting a term as a mayor of Kirtmansur town can be quite an overwhelming responsibility, especially in these challenging times. There is an enormous amount of work to be done along with high expectations. I value the special responsibility bestowed upon me to serve the community of Kirtmanzua as its mayor. And therefore I commit to carry out this role to the best of my ability. I must also express my sincere appreciation to my fellow council, councillors for placing their trust in me to lead this council. I am proud, indeed proud, to represent LPM today in this council and always commit to be a true ambassador to this great uh, progressing party. And I can therefore ensure that we will always be guided by our party manifesto. The LPM model is indeed restoring our people's dignity and we will always try by all means to live up to it. Therefore, the LPM-led council will prioritize the following. Addressing unemployment, fighting poverty, promote land and agrarian reform, fighting corruption, improve social welfare and human development for all. In conclusion, it is imperative to mention 
that in order to bring about change for the better, we will definitely need every citizen to contribute towards the common good. I call on the community of Kiet Manzo to get involved and help us in making our town a model for other councils to emulate. I thank you. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, welcome to another exciting edition. Looking at the expected weather from the north to the south, partly cloudy conditions are expected at Ungodiva this week, although no showers are forecast and temperatures are at around the 30 degree mark. In the northeast, thunder showers can be expected over the weekend at Rundu, where after it will clear. The same conditions are expected for the central areas at Ochivarongo. Temperatures in the mid 30s are expected for Marintal, along with cloudy conditions, although rain is only expected on Monday. Extremely hot conditions are forecast for the far south today, with some showers expected at Karasburg over the weekend. Thank you so much Namibian viewers for watching our show. That's all that we had in store for you today. From myself to Noale, the regional reviews team and the rest of the Namibia Media Holdings and NTV team, it is goodbye and see you next week.